Well, I think this is two unboxing videos in a row. This is Joe Degancic from Lighting Answers, and we are going to be taking a look at the brand new Apple TV, the fourth generation. Why is this relevant to a lighting and home automation series? Well, because this will be your link to remotely controlling outside of your Wi-Fi network your HomeKit devices. So uh, let's take a look. And in fact, this is really Apple's only home automation product, technically. And let's go ahead and slice this guy open. We're opening the box on its side to prevent too much uh, blurring and post-production editing work and whatnot. So we'll get past the address and flip this around. And... Kind of a cool, this is pretty much it, where the box kind of just opens up nicely. And uh, so there we go, there's the nice black, definitely larger box. Uh, the previous one was white, I believe, with the, the black Apple TV right there. somewhere else. And right on top, of course, we've got the Apple TV box, which is looks to be the same physical, at least in length by width dimensions. But of course, definitely a lot taller. We'll do a size comparison here in a moment. So don't worry about that. So we've got the Apple TV. And of course, the brand new, as they're calling it, the Siri remote. That's got the touchpad, menu button, basically the new home button, the TV button, Siri, play pause, and um, volume up down, which would be pretty cool. And of course, now the lightning port so that you can uh, recharge it and see how that feels in a second. Let's see what else is in the, the box here. Probably not a whole lot, except for the um, power cable. Pretty standard, looks, let's see if the other end is, yep. So I should be able to actually not even use this and just literally substitute, um, plug the, um, the Apple TV directly in so I don't have to redo all of my wiring that I just worked on. Apple TV, let's just get uh, let's get started. Apple uh, stickers, of course, pretty simple. Plug it in. Here's how to do everything and enjoy your new Apple TV. I think I certainly will. And of course, the lightning cable for charging. I assume the remote would come fully charged, but we'll probably charge it anyways. And uh, those are the contents of the box. So let's get the new Apple TV plugged in, powered on, and start setting it up. And we have trimmed down the amount of time of the actual setup process. The new Apple TV features new designs and a new setup sequence, and mostly black on white instead of white on black. So we get the remote paired up and select the language, the country, and now we can actually set it up with the device. We're gonna do this with the iPhone and we'll get the dual screen there so we can log in basically put it near the Apple TV and say continue as it prompts uh, and sees the iPhone and the Apple TV. Uh, they see each other through Bluetooth proximity. Put in the Apple ID and password and proceed forward, sending data to Apple, you know, getting all their information uh, submitted to improve their services. Turn on location services. We'll turn Siri on, 
and we'll automatically download those new really cool video based screensavers. Send apples and diagnostics and usage, send the app analytics to the developers, and of course agree to the warranty and the terms of conditions and everything else. And here we are at a very minimal um, new home screen where you have to install the apps. They don't come pre-installed for you. All right, so now that we've gone through the basics of the new Apple TV setup and put in the Apple ID and password credentials that set up iCloud and iTunes, let's see if this will work out of the box and connect to my existing HomeKit enabled Philips Hue lights, which are already set up and good to go with HomeKit on my iPhone. Now, of course, if you have an Apple TV third generation, this will also work for you. But the fourth generation, obviously, for many people who are wanting to upgrade, is kind of the logical choice these days. So no trickery or anything. We're going to do this uh, live like we normally do. We'll close this up again. And we will go ahead and enable, or actually, I'm sorry, disable um, uh, Wi-Fi, not Bluetooth. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and open it up. And let's talk to Siri. Turn off TV light strip. Okay, the TV light strip is turned off. And let's turn it back on. Turn on TV light strip. Make TV light strip green. Cream coming right up. Okay, well, it actually made it cream, even though we wanted green. Let's try that again. Never mind. <laughs> oh, the joys of voice control for automation of anything. Make TV light strip purple. All right, well, that. Coming right up. There we go, that worked. Okay, we're going to go back to blue now, hopefully. Make TV light strip blue. Your wish is my command. And low, blue. Set the lights to 25. You got it, Nidokuma. I've set all of the lights to 25. Okay, so... At least it does work out of the box in terms of that you can control things remotely from outside of your home. Apple has made that promise and now the Apple TV, Apple TV brand new one, the fourth generation, or the Apple TV third generation both have the ability of being your link from HomeKit uh, and your devices inside your home to iOS devices that are enabled for HomeKit and are all linked up outside of your home. And yes, we checked to make sure that when you put this new Apple TV to sleep, the remote HomeKit functionality still works. Apple TV is basically the only product that Apple really actually makes that is a home automation device at all, and you've just witnessed its basic capabilities. There are no apps at this point for home automation, but something has got to be probably coming soon. Be sure to subscribe right here on Lighting Answers for all of your LED and advanced lighting information and more cool stuff coming up, of course, with home automation. I'm Jody Ganzik for Lighting Answers. Get out there and automate color and brighten your world. We'll see you next time.